This is Chuck, the Iceman of the Down. You're listening to my pal, Little Jimmy Norton. Ah, uh, it's getting busy in here. Opie and Anthony. Of course, Jim Norton. Louis C.K. Louis, where are you playing? Long Island? Long Island, the Westbury, Westbury uh, North Fork Music Hall. Thingy. Yeah. Thing uh, place? Thing place. It used to be the Westbury Music Fair, That's they called I, it. And then it was the tent for a while. Was it? The music tent, and now it's the hall. I don't know. Now it's, yeah, the um, North Fork Bank. The Long Bank Islanders Center. now. It's on Saturday. They know. And it's in the round, right? I think so. I think we're... I, I, I don't know. They... I don't know if I'm, like, rotating in the round or something. <laughs> yeah, you are in the round. I think it rotates really slow. The stage slow. rotates real slow. Yeah, that's, that's I saw Bob Saget there, yeah. and he was making fun of some uh, old lady that was at his show. And he had to keep pacing, like... No, and then all of a sudden, like, his perspective, because like you just said, the stage, like, uh, rotates so slow that you yeah. don't even think it's rotating. Mm -hmm. So what was hilarious, he wanted to go back to the old lady to he make fun of her again. Her. And he's pointing... And she's no longer over there. She's yeah. now behind him, and everyone starts laughing and yelling, she's now <laughs> over here. And he, he was so confused because yeah. cause you have no idea that thing is slowly rotating. No. And you got to concentrate on what you're wearing from the back also. Yeah, exactly. That's, because, you know, usually you get up there, you don't care if you're you know, baggy pants, yeah, hanging really. ass, whatever. Yeah. And you got to kind of look good from all around 360. Yeah. I, I saw. Usually, I, I usually have caca on the back of my pants. <laughs> I saw a yes in the round Jesus once. Caca. Really? Oh, it was yes in the round. They're, they're not many better from behind. It was. A, <laughs> they're great it's from not behind. Like when you see the back of yes, you go, oh my god, that's what all the hoopla is about. What I was missing. It was a three-hour show, and they played four songs, so it was terrific for everybody. <laughs> I've actually done that gig, the Westbury Music. For, I didn't headline it. I, mm -hmm. Actually, I did it years ago, 2002. Ooh. Um, but I, I was no, I, I, no in the no. round. I didn't. I didn't in the round. No, you didn't. No. Yeah. No, no, I was the closing act. <laughs> I, uh, but I, I did it in the round with Jay Black and the Americans, who has the record for the most sellouts in the Westbury Music Fair. A little wow. bit of trivia. Yeah, hey, I like that trivia. Um, and he's filthy. He drops the C bomb. His really? Oh, he's a, a dirtbag when he talks. <laughs> he's a hoot. Really? He's, yeah, he's great. Uh, what's he Jay saying? and the Americans? What's the big song he sings? Only uh, in America. You mean that? Oh, uh, he's the saying. It begins with a C. There's a song with a big C. Uh, uh. Cherokee, Pete. No. Oh. no, no, no. I don't know. What is that song? It's like a one-hit wonder. No, he had a couple of big ones. He had a couple of big no, ones. No, he didn't. <clears throat> Jay Blank and the Americans? Give me the very best of Jay and the Americans. Give me the song list. Yeah, there's a lot of hits there. First, one, uh, First of all, the very best of Jay and the Americans right, has one. seven songs. <laughs> <laughs> so they couldn't, they, couldn't, they couldn't scrape up eight or nine. Nothing against Jay and the Americans, but if you put out the very best of Jay and the Americans, you better damn... Hope that you have more than seven songs. songs. How do you wait? Seven oh, oh. only in America. This oh, this magic oh, yeah, moment. Oh, I know that one. A bit closer, that one. Yeah, that's like a that's like a TV ultra commercial. bright. That's a big hit toothpaste song. or something. Wait, that was actually his that's song. His song, yeah. Wait, give me a taste of that's that. That's arid, extra dry. You can't. You huh? can't. We got all sorts of uh, oh, issues she's today. Okay. You know, uh, I met the guy who wrote uh, "By Menon." Oh, no, really. I did. And that's, Seriously, is the whole song just by Menon, or is he more makes? To it? Yeah, that's it. And that's he it. Makes a fortune. On Three that. notes. By Menon. He actually that's wrote it, it as B.I. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> no, I asked him about it. He said that you know he, he, he Menon gave him a shot at. It. They said, well, you know, give us a give us some. So he gave him like twenty things by Menon and by Menon. <laughs> like, hey, how by many? Menon. It was every combination I'm of back! three notes, yeah. Yeah. and they picked number fifteen or whatever. And it's it's it bought him. You know, he has a house and all kinds of stuff from him. Wow. We also got to say hi to Jim Jeffries, who played Caroline's last night here in New York. Hello. How'd it go, Jim? It was all right. Yeah, that wasn't bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people laugh. That's the job, isn't it? You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's all you can ever ask for. Mm. Yeah. I, got, I, I love it how you drop the C bomb. What is it yeah. dropping all these swear words? What, is this an American term now to say you drop the F yes. bomb? Well, I, yeah, the bomb. I hate say I because I hate so much saying he said the C word. I hate the C word. And that's what we'll, if one of us curses. Yeah, yeah. So, man, you dropped an F-bomb like, just you know, in the wrong time. We're oh, very right. militaristic, uh, you know, yeah. country, and we love dropping bombs and stuff. Yeah. So uh, even curses can be dropped like a bomb. And 
I want hopefully to, injure people. Let me get this correct. Is Louis C.K. so big now that he has people standing behind him at a gig? Is this what we're talking about? <laughs> yes. Is that what happens? What? Like, is no. that what you mean when you're in the round? No, like, in the round means that, yeah, that, that there's seats all around you and the stage rotates. I've never done well, it. Before. Stage thought slowly of this. Like, what, is that a good... That's a stupid idea, right? I'm not, I'm yeah, not sure which retard thought of it. Yeah, but yeah, it was a retard. I, I, I don't think they really had comics in mind yeah, when, when they you, did they that. It was like music. for a band. Oh, so it's a big place. It's not like an 80-seater. Yeah. Right. No. <laughs> oh, God, that would be funny. Intimate club in the round. <laughs> You're standing on a sit and spin. Yeah, it's yeah, like one of those things they put mannequins on. A and bus yeah, boy yeah, spins you around. Yeah, like a Disney uh, uh Exhibit. Like, like yeah. standing on a 78th. Yeah. 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 Like in the middle of a Chinese restaurant so you can right. get to the food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that place is pretty much made for bands and they would set up so you could see everybody in the band. But um, yeah, comics, it's a little. It's a little strange. weird. I don't it like works, but I uh, I was at the movies the other night and um, uh, I see a trailer come on. Oh yeah, and, and I'm just sitting there and, and and I just had a burst out. It's Louie. <laughs> yeah, yes. You I'm were huge. Trailer. I'm in a trailer. I'm like 18 feet tall. You were huge in the on the screen. I'm just yeah. like what, it's Louie. You know what's great is that my dad and my mother both had the same experience because they didn't even know I was that's how little I could call them. That's how bad a son I am. <laughs> My dad was like, he's just going to see a movie, and he sees his son making a goofy stop the music for the joke. Right, yes. <laughs> like, I know. I know. It's that too. The music's <laughs> like, darn it, darn it. And then my joke. And then, <laughs> it's really, he's that guy in the trailer. Really cheesy. One, one movie. It's a movie with Martin Lawrence. It's called um, Welcome Home, Roscoe Jenkins. Right. And he plays a, uh, it's coming out in February, I guess, and he plays this this, I, I got this uh, call from my agent once during last year during the summer saying they want you to audition for this Martin Lawrence movie. And I said, no, I don't I, I don't audition for stuff because I don't get I never get it. Right. I, I, I stink. Not with that attitude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so they they, uh, you know, because it's not just an, you don't just you got to go park in some place and get a validation and walk uh, in the hot sun across it. So there's a lot you, more than just standing there and auditioning. Yeah, and then you get in there, and they're like, we're so glad you're here. We're fans of your stand-up. And then you open your mouth, and they go, "What? why did you come here? You're awful. <laughs> so it's an awful thing to go through. It's terrible. So I don't do it anymore. So then the, one day they, they go, the, the, this Martin Lawrence movie really wants to see you. So I said, all right, make an appointment. And they made the appointment. And then it was, I remember it was like 3 o'clock on a Wednesday. And so it got to be 2.30. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not going. I didn't go. And <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. So they How call, did you get so you're popular? Like, like, <laughs> you're you're a go-getter, Lou. <laughs> yeah, so they call me and they go, uh, you know, they're really, they're in, offended because they actually really made, they, they made a space for you. And, <laughs> All right, make another appointment. So they made another appointment on the day I was leaving, and I just, again, I, I, I got on the flight, and I remember being on the flight going, oh, boo, oh, I forgot. <laughs> and then I get to New York, and there's a script of the movie waiting for me in my apartment, and it, and with a note, please put yourself on tape. There should have just been an F you note. Yeah. Just but they want me to, they go, want me to go get, screw. I'm certainly not going to go get a video camera, set it up, make my wife talk like Martin Lawrence. So I can audition for this movie <laughs> and then send it. So yeah. I, I said, yes, I'll put myself on tape. And I never did. And then two weeks later, my my agent called and said, they're giving you the part. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, that is a great strategy. Yes, it is. It's like, I don't care if I get it. I don't yeah. even, I'm not going to audition. Yeah. You were they, so they, relaxed. Yeah. They're they're giving you the, the reason I think, because I've cast movies and, and TV shows, when you go on tape, when or when you audition for something, you close the book on yourself. You they they go okay because every audition kind of sucks, mm -hmm. no matter how good somebody is. When you audition, it's disappointing. Like even if it's like oh let's get Robert De Niro, and then he if he auditioned, which he doesn't obviously, you go eh, it wasn't what I saw. But Could when you there's be somebody, more De Niro, <laughs> when, yeah, exactly. But when you see when somebody's out there and they won't audition, you're like, but he might be the guy. He might be the guy. <laughs> and so they didn't find anybody. You'd good. rather have the element of doubt yes. working for you. Oh, hey, buddy, that's the first movie I ever got, and I got it that way. I, I and I've done two more movies uh, that I got <laughs> without auditioning. I love it. Same way. Bravo. Same way. You know, whatever works for you, yeah. man. But that, the line uh, in the thing, the stupid thing is he's a TV show host, and I go, you're the new Oprah. You're, op you're the male Oprah. You're Oprah, bro. 
It's yes. an awful, awful uh, joke. Yes, yes. Did you deliver I'd, lo- I'd love to, to, to lay it on the movie, but I made it up. It was an ad lib. You're up, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when, when, I saw your, when I saw your huge face on the screen, yeah. I wanted to yell out, I know this guy, yeah. until the joke. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> then, <laughs> then, who's that guy? What an idiot. It was ass. like, Louie, Louie, uh, Louie, you want to sit over here near me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey, bro. We uh, <laughs> I made that, I made Jimmy's that up. still repeating the You're, line. I don't actually bro. get it. I, I, I don't actually. I don't actually get well, it. Because Oprah, Oprah is that like? He's the male. Oh, Oprah. Oh yeah, that's like a Oprah. bra. Bro, which is bro is like a black. What black? Yeah, uh, yeah. Gentle, gentlemen yeah, refer yo, to each my, other. Yeah, my bro. The word, yeah, the word a long time bra ago. Bra doesn't mean <laughs> yeah. a feminine black word, does it? Is no, that? but it's just the neg- uh, the the that mask- joke sucks. Mac- no, it doesn't. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't need the feminine <laughs> side to what? then have. Why don't we listen? <laughs> why don't we listen oh. to the joke? Oh, All right. Okay. Showtime. Yeah. America's the music. favorite talk show host is Mary, television sweetheart. You're the male Oprah. Ope, bro. <laughs> <But because it's- laughs> yeah, there it is. The worst part is no, that No, I'm he- wrong. That's an excellent, excellent joke. I know. Joke. It's really good. The worst part is that the guy, uh, the director kept telling me to laugh at the joke. <laughs> he goes, oh, that's you he laughing? Goes, yeah, he goes, okay. you got it. You have to really, you're being funny and you're making a joke. Everything I do in the movie where I'm tr- um, saying anything that's funny, which is never, uh, <laughs> he says, you have to laugh really hard because you're being funny. Did you have to wear oh, the whole I'm hood? laughing. I'm LOLing Who directed all this? of my jokes. <laughs> Who directed I'm this? one of those jackasses that writes a joke and then says no. LOL, LOL to himself. Yeah. Did you have to wear the Bluetooth Dr- through the whole movie? Yes, I did. I'm wearing a Bluetooth. I see that. Like, I see it. There he is. Are you meant to be like a manager type of guy or something? Yeah, that, that's exactly it. I'm Let me hear it again. Right. For the male Oprah. Ope. Bro. <laughs> but before they start their new family, he's taking her back home to meet his. That's it. Ha ha ha! That was a yeah, good laugh, though. Pre- well, it was a funny Who's joke. the director? He sounds like he wrote his comedy. Uh, Malcolm uh, Lee, Spike Lee's cousin. Cool, because that is, he's right, though. That is the way to do it. Is, uh, you should always laugh after you say something funny. Yes, always. Good thing Spike didn't think that way. Yeah. Malcolm X, he would have said, go, her, after you say anything tough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've been hoodwinked. <laughs> <laughs> hoodwinked. Let's, let's go to Jared in Boston. Jared, what's up? Hey. Hey. What's up, Jared? Boo. Oh, <laughs> give him the Jimmy Boo. No, 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 no awesome. not the Jimmy Boo. boo. My chick awesome. does that to me when I tell a bad joke in the relationship. Really? Well, she'll be laying around. I'll say something awful. And if it's really bad, she'll go, thanks, Uncle Jim. Or she'll just go, <laughs> oh. or, or, or she'll oh. just go boo. Oh. She boos me in our personal life. Hey, uh, we, got, <laughs> we got a taser uh, story. I'm reminding her that you're permanently older than her. That's got to be hurt, more hurtful, though. <laughs> no, that please. It, that it she'll never catch up. up to you. How, yeah. how, how young is your bird? How young is she? Well, uh, she is. I'm I'm 39, and she's uh, 29. Yeah, that's all right. Or she will be actually. That's so right. She, she will be. In she will be. Right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I want to get to the story. It's a, a taser uh, story. We love mm. these. Oh. And in this case, the guy was uh, tased to death. Wow, it killed him. This isn't going to help our taser uh, pajama party. We're trying no. to get uh, get together. We're trying to get like a lingerie party with girls, mm-hmm. uh, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> to come in with girls yeah. to come in here, and then we want to tase them. <laughs> As they were, as they were little tiny little, and they'll outfits. be wearing like the sexiest things, little boy shorts and, and stuff. Haze. And we just want to like hit them with stun guns, yeah. little teddies. Yeah, there's a, there's a few videos online. We can't play them today. <laughs> We're shut down today. The master computer shut down. Are you seriously going to do that? Well, yeah, yes. we really want to do this. Oh, my God. Is that well, legal? Are you we, we, don't, we don't care. Oh. To, do they have to yeah. sign away the we rights? Might not even, yeah, they would sign away the rights to live. Just go to Antigua. Film it in Antigua. <laughs> yeah, we'll just fine. go to another country. and yeah. We're probably not even going to broadcast it. We're just going to do it bam. somewhere. If you get tased, does a burn mark appear on your body? Or is that just, you know. That's only if you really, like, leave out. it and bam. You know. So If you just tap them, boof. Uh, it's They'll just pain. fall down and scream oh, and writhe around in their little panties. Louie, there's, there's videos oh. out there. Go to YouTube. There's a girl singing Sweet Home <laughs> Alabama in tiny little boy shorts and a little tank top, and she gets uh, tased. So, oh, you you got it. It. so oh. it is something that is happening out so there. So you nick this idea. 
Yeah, we yeah, want. Yeah, yeah, yeah good for it. you. It's a good idea. <laughs> well, <laughs> awesome. well, that that was like a ten second video. We want a whole party, man. You know, with all sorts of pajama party it's games. Pretty and, good. And we're gonna tase the girl. I was thinking Twi- about you should play uh, Twister while the, you're tasing. And by the way, <laughs> by the way, we had plenty of girls calling as soon as we brought up this. Of course uh, you did. This idea. Of all right, here did. we go. Uh, crazy <laughs> Polish guy in Canadian airport gets tasered to death. Oh, awesome. This one died. The video begins with a man who appears agitated. By now, 40-year-old Robert Sikansky has been in the secure area of Vancouver International for almost 10 hours. Passengers are trying to talk to him in English, but he doesn't seem to understand. With the woman on this side of a glass wall and he on the other, Zikansky can be seen picking up a computer and throwing it. In fact, he threw the computer and a chair in front of two YVR security guards who make no attempt to restrain him. The RCMP won't arrive for another 1 minute 45 seconds. Security guards didn't try to restrain him? No, they let him get... Yeah, we're going to find out. Hand, I guess. And the Royal uh, Canadian Police... Here's the here's the, up. Yeah. here's the clip of the hot girl singing "Sweet Home Alabama." Just in case you didn't believe me. Where, where? <laughs> See, that's what we want to do right oh there. God. Do we have happy birthday too? Yeah, these are really quick. Here's happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Oh, good, good, <laughs> idiot. Is that crazy? Can't you visualize it? This studio filled with hot girls in pajamas. I'll visualize kids. it, yeah. Of course, you want to be here, right? I'm going to be here. And because the holiday's right around the uh, corner, I'm gonna we got this. Touch one. myself to it tonight before it even happens. Jingle bells, jingle all the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. All right, here's uh, more. Hold on, Lou, do you think Fred Claus looks funny? Oh, I'm. Does it look fun? I mean, it's <laughs> not, I mean, not even mind to say it's a absolute that that looks funny. A hoot. I've never seen so much advertising for one film in my entire Oh my life. god, it's embarrassing. And, yeah. it, and it doesn't look good. Well, yeah. that's why all the advertising. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They don't do that over uh, where you're from. No. Over here, if you see a commercial for a movie it. over and over again, it means it blows. Yeah. When I see Vince Vaughn um, on that big wheel in the print ad. Crazy. It just cracks me up. It's like, why would a big guy like Vince Vaughn be on a big wheel? I know that must being be being chased and stuff. And I laugh every time I see it. Oh, because he's too big for that. He's oh, too big he for that. Is. Totally too, too big really for it. Big. Oh, it's just silly. It's just so silly. Why would a big fella do that? Wow. I know. And then my mind runs through all the other little things that he can be on. As yes, a big fella. <laughs> exactly. And I'm like, I can't wait to see what things they chose. <laughs> so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'll go to the tape whatever you want, man. You're old, bro. Yeah, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> oh, bro. Yeah. Here's uh, here's more from the crazy Polish guy. <laughs> you gotta laugh. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. You're old, bro. Bang! <laughs> 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 Yeah, he's in a movie, and we're doing a dumb radio show. I know. <laughs> yeah, we're idiots. Yeah, I got $100,000 for a week's work. Yeah. <laughs> really? Wow. So for that joke. So yes. For that so joke. So make it cost me 200 Tell me you do that. other jokes just as what? good. There's like four no, or five. No, that's the best one. That's the best one. That's the best one. 100 grand. He's going to have yeah. the very best of Louis C.K. He's going to have that's seven right. jokes. That's one of them. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's going to be number one. Right. Here's Jay Black. Look, I can tell my friends that I know the guy who says the Oak Bro joke. That's right. <laughs> I'm going to be like the king back in England. That's right. <laughs> when that I mean, that's movie what gets gonna, released on DVD. That's what I'm going to be to black people after that movie comes back. <laughs> it's Oprah guy. Hey, Oprah guy. Yeah. All right, here's uh, more. It's going to be on my posters when I go on tour. <laughs> Oprah Louis C.K. <laughs> here's more from the crazy Polish guy. Despite two clear warnings that he does not speak English, the RCMP speak to Zakansky in English for about 29 <laughs> seconds before they taser him. At one point just before this, Zakansky can be seen putting his hands up and walking away, seemingly in frustration. You can hear someone yell, hit him again, hit him again. Harder, harder. Hit the Pollock, hit the Pollock. Harder, harder. <laughs> hit the Pollock, hit the Pollock. I thought that was going to be funny. It really was just a man dying. We yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's really no humor there. Well, he didn't die like Jerry Lewis or something. <laughs> no, I don't. 
He's saying with the power. And, and he clearly <laughs> said twice that he doesn't speak English. How exactly would he do that? He, yeah, exactly. Yeah. just heard a guy die. Dude, I don't yeah. speak English. Yeah. yeah. Here, Stop. Here's the last Don't the tase story. me, bro. Don't taste me, bro. I love that. Don't taste me, oh, bro. One officer appearing to place his knee on the victim's neck, but appears to remain there even after Zakansky stops breathing. Oh, boy. About here, Zakansky seems to stop breathing, and the officer with his back to the camera still has his right knee on the victim's neck. I heard him say code red. On the right of your screen, someone in a suit appears to check for a pulse. An autopsy would later reveal Zakansky had no drugs or alcohol in his body at the time of death. Damn. But he had a lot of volts of electricity. <laughs> it was glowing. <laughs> might have something to do with it. It seemed like the uh, the knee to the neck might have uh, caused some complications there. Yeah. That's the thing that has kept me from doing anything where I would be arrested in that fashion. Yeah. Like if 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 I ever uh, get arrested, I will be very cooperative, gentleman. I will put my oh, hands yeah. behind my back, whatever yeah. it takes. But uh, the resisting thing. That there's knee a, to the neck. There's yes. There's a, there's a whole bunch of standard procedures that can kill you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, and they're fine with it. Like oh, totally. it, you will just be dead, no, yeah. and the, they'll go on working. Yep. Oh, well, the cops love killing people. Yeah, well, you know, it, it's uh, they, we have a, we have a case <laughs> here a in New York. Sweeping statement, I know. <laughs> case here in New York uh, where um, so a guy was shot uh, t what twenty times. He uh, came out of uh, his his uh, house. A nine one one call came in. Mother said uh, that her son is acting all weird and uh, violent. Uh, could you send the police? And in the background, the son. All you hear him saying is, "I got a gun. I got a gun. Uh, uh, come on, bring it." Um, so that's what the nine one one operator then conveyed to the police. Yeah. A lot of people don't understand that when you call nine one one, it doesn't go to the cop car no. as he's answering. The, the cop just hears. We have a call, man, violent man with a weapon. Yeah, it's a very dangerous version of telephone. Right. So they go there. Now, a second 911 call comes in. Mm -hmm. And apparently this one, which just turned up today, the mother again calls and somehow says uh, kind of vaguely that her son doesn't have a gun. Mm -hmm. But the son keeps saying he's got a gun. How do you vaguely now, say you don't have a gun? Yeah, yeah. Because she was kind of like... my son doesn't have a gun. Yeah, he doesn't have quick. a gun. Well, the, the 911 operator asked, is he armed? Does he have a gun? And she went, mm-hmm. Uh, he said something. It, yeah. it wasn't like, like, no, he does not have a gun. Don't shoot him. Yeah. It was a bit vague. Yeah, it was a little vague. Yeah. And and that <laughs> message doesn't get to the cops. They're already, no. you know, they're, they're flying. They could be there already. Yeah, it's yes or no. Right. Yeah. So... So he comes out of the window finally, and the cops tell him to stop. He grabs into his uh, pants uh, and under his shirt and pulls something out. They open fire on him. It turns out to be a brush. Yeah. It's a brush. He wanted well, to look good. I, I agree with the cops on that. I, uh -huh. I reckon yeah. kill the Yeah, yeah. The cops were well within their right. They felt the cop doesn't, there doesn't have to be a gun. They just have to feel that they're like. Life is is being that's threatened their, their to right. use deadly force. And if that's he was right. pulling a yeah. brush out, he was just being cheeky, wasn't he? At that moment, he didn't uh, want to cheeky. That's just <laughs> one word. Yeah, he was for just it. being a bit cheeky there. <laughs> yes, he and was. I think you're and right. implying that he had a gun, so he killed the bastard. But I, I I heard Earl on Ron and Fez yesterday commenting on this, and of course Earl was all against the police on this one, saying they shot at him even after he dropped the brush. I said, and I, all I could think of, I wanted to call him, but all I could think of is the cops gone. He dropped a brush, which means he's still got a gun. <laughs> and just opened up on him. He no, really got he to... reached into his pants and pulled yeah. out a black hand. So it needed <laughs> yeah. to be shot. Pretty much. We really Some have... people are saying that. They look like guns. Their hands look like guns. Yeah. It... Oh, my God. We really got to take a break. Yeah, we got We're really, break. really late. We got Jim Jeffries in studio, <laughs> Louis C.K., uh, uh, Jim Jeffries, Caroline's tonight again. Caroline's tonight at uh, 10 p.m. And Louis C.K. out there on Long Island. Westbury, uh, the, geez, North, uh, uh, North, uh, North, North Fork. Fork. North Fork Bank Center, the place where I can talk and you can <laughs> when? listen. When? When? Westbury. Money. Saturday night, Saturday 17th. Night. All right, we'll be back. Opie and Anthony. <laughs> Hear what everyone else is talking about. O&A, uncut and live, continuing the show on XM Satellite Radio, starting at 9 a.m. Eastern. Visit xmradio.com to subscribe. <laughs> Yeah, we're back. Opie and Anthony, Jim Jeffries giving us good stuff uh, during the breaks. 
Oh, I'm funny in the breaks. Probably, probably <laughs> not here. No, awesome in the breaks. Now we're gonna go right back to that in a second, but I, I got to play tomorrow sound so people are uh, are uh, into the game for tomorrow. Okay, this is what you're listening for between <clears throat> seven and seven thirty. If you want to win a thousand dollars tomorrow. Hi, I'm Kenny, and I love the taffy. Don't ask. But that's what uh, <laughs> God. That's what the listeners need to listen for tomorrow between seven and seven thirty. If you want to win a thousand dollars, that sound and all the sound clips are up on O and A Radio dot com. So whoever, you know what you're listening for. Whoever wins should spend that thousand dollars to have that man killed. <laughs> <laughs> he could not take direction. No, he could absolutely not take direction. We're no. trying to tell him, you know, punch it up a little bit. You know, get some energy. Mm -hmm. uh, you do a little cartoony voice, but but make it loud. Right. Okay, it was the same blah 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 delivery. And laugh Who at it that? after you Who, say it. Yeah, laugh at it, yeah. Just some, yeah. <laughs> Finish the, with the word it. bro. <laughs> you gotta make it clear uh, that the joke happened. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, if you don't laugh, how's the audience gonna know you're trying to be funny? <laughs> they might actually think that you think his name is Opro. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you better laugh. You better, you better laugh. Yeah. <laughs> Jim was talking about how the Brits are not nice people. Well, I'm, and we're just getting into it uh, as we got uh, back into the show. I was just here. saying, every time I see like American stand-up, they're always like, I went over to England, and English people are so polite. They do this. Well, you, you people are the politest people in the world. Right? I'm getting people <laughs> every day telling me to have a nice day, and I'm such a moody bastard. I'm looking at them going, well, I'll see about that. <laughs> don't you tell me? Don't you tell me what I should do with my day, you pompous American? <laughs> Right? But the Brits are the rudest. Like, if you people think they're all polite and tit-bit tally-ho and walking around with bowler hats and, like, saying, excuse me, and lots of other stuff, I can't say exactly what they say, but go to a football match and have your son's head kicked in in front of you because he, was, you know, because he didn't know what the offside rule meant. Right? <laughs> Like, they're proper rude people. And it, proper rude people, proper, yeah. Proper rude. And, like, no one tips or anything like that. They Their beer is flat. Do you want to know why their beer is flat? Why? Right? Like, it comes through the taps flatter because they're cheap bastards, right? They want the beer to the top. They don't want any head on oh, it whatsoever. Right. Because if there's a little bit of head on it, that means they're losing, like, yeah. 3% of the volume. <laughs> yeah, no oxygen. They don't there. like... Yeah. They don't like... Uh, ice because that once again you don't get as Water much drink yep. as thing. and because their teeth are so rotten they're sensitive that they can't even drink <laughs> they sensitive teeth they really nice do. warm liquids they really uh, do that. they scoop the ice out of the drink and oh, they're a horrible mongrel yeah. breed they, <laughs> they stink as a nation they do but I live there and I miss it very much yeah well I, and you were talking yesterday that there's racism but it's, uh, it's different it's not the typical black uh, well, the, white racism the, there's the, they have they, they've, well, they used to hate the black people in the 70s, right? And they had some very racist sitcoms. They call them, what's the word they use there? The uh, Nignog. 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 Oh, my God. Nignog. Is that what it's called yeah, in I'm, England? I'm not having that Nignog come around my house. You know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> right? Wow. Are you serious? Yeah, Nignog. Wow. Yeah, sounds like, that a, used sounds to like be. a drink you have on Kwanzaa. That sounds like a... That, sounds like a, <laughs> <laughs> that used to be Kwanzaa. in sitcoms, they would say this word. And then that, have, but that sounds like a sitcom catchphrase. I'm not having that Nignog around my house. All right. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Someone Google a show called Love Thy Neighbor that the Brits had in the 70s, and the show was basically, there's a white family and a black family. They live next door. How are they going to get along? Gonna ha Actually, right. that's where, isn't that where All in the Family came from, I think? No, that was uh, Man About the House. Till Death. Till Death to Us Part. The thing is, Man About the House was Three's Company. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. All, the man about all day that in his sitcom, he would call him Sambo, Nig Nog, all these type of... Wow. Jungle yeah. Bunny was another... <laughs> right? Like, and he goes through the whole show, and then the black guy would call him Snowflake, yeah. like, once. And everyone yeah, would go, it. well, now it's even. Now <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. The, yeah. the, the black guy's had his own, you know, everything's yeah. fine. Continue well, that's what I've always hilarity. felt about, you know, black... Oh, what, dumped? They had... What? Dumped? Why, why were they dumping, why are they um, English, dumping English versions of words in this context the and discussion? The description of uh, what Jim was saying has been dumped every time. That's, are you that's serious? Hysterical. Well, oh, I'm sorry. You I mean your fault? It's, it's not, not that's your hysterical. fault. Hysterical. Not your I was, fault. There's no speaking, racism in England. Then I was speaking that's what in we're, context. Yeah. That's what. Oh, yeah, be it careful with that word too. <laughs> it was completely in context. Yeah. And well, it's, it's just... Uh, these aren't my thoughts, people. It's describing... My dad, on the other hand, that's exactly how he thinks. <laughs> what the words are in England. That's like, amazing. no one would... Wow. It's well, funny folks. that that's a, a, a bad word in England because it sounds so harmless. Yes, it does. It sounds silly. 
Wow, that just and that just stopped a hilarious uh, that's oh, amazing. Yeah. segment of the Opie and Anthony show. You were on a roll, too, my friend. Yeah, he's funny. He's uh, funny. It, it made Jim leave the studio. He's going to march down the hall. It's funny if people go to, to see him now because they take our word for it, and then there's just blank spaces in his act. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, he was really doing the whole thing yeah. on the air. and it was just... Well, I'm, okay, oh just, just for the record, there's no racism in England. Oh, yeah, not yeah, even at all. I, I, yeah, I, I just want there to be, yeah. be quite certain. There's, there's none anywhere in the world, none. No, it's none. It's all anywhere. love. It is. I bet you they didn't dump and, snowflakes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not well, that's the thing is it. that but the words that black people can say about white people are, are they can't hurt. No. Because, like, if they call, if you, what, the words that, that, that people call black people bring them back to all the terrible things that have ever happened to them. That's why they uh -huh. hurt so much. But you call me a cracker, and I'm, it brings me. As, I'm like, oh yeah, well, uh, I owned a lot of land and people. And, <laughs> where, uh, where does the word cracker <laughs> come from? Where does it that come means from? it's something that you call somebody. It means crack of the whip. So it's like oh. it doesn't really make a. It's not like you're taking a person down. Like ah, cracker. Yeah, well, yeah, yes, that's... Uh, a white suit, some lemonade, where and, honky uh, come a mint from? julep. <laughs> a mint julep. <laughs> what about honky? Is honky a, what is that one? I don't know how honky. It's just a dumb word. Some honky. people say it's because of the I, way that I, white Americans talk. Uh, oh, kind of nasally <laughs> honk, 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 honk. Yeah. Just, uh, okay. Yeah, like, I, I that would make geese. sense. I don't think there's one white person that has been offended by that word. I really Not a one. Never. My daughter cried. <laughs> when she was called a honky? Somebody called her a honky in school. <laughs> they were Are you to... serious? No, of course not. <laughs> I, was... I thought that's an awesome yeah. story. No, that would have carrying, been a great story. She was carrying a book and wearing sunglasses, and there was a bunch of black people calling her honky. And uh, as she was, as the National Guard was leading her into a... Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, right. Segregated school. school. Yes, exactly. <laughs> what happened, Jimmy? I just saw Tom in the hall. He's like, I talked to him. I don't think it should have been done. I don't think that was Tom. Oh, well, yeah. F and A. Am I in trouble that's, now? Oh, no, 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 you're not. No. no. The guy is, uh, look, I know he's Bloody honky. To, the guy turned you to have to leave the country, though. <laughs> to, uh, yeah. You know how frustrating that is? That was probably the funniest segment of the entire show. And yeah. A lot of people didn't get to hear because uh, we got a panicky Pete on the button. Yeah. He's panicky Pete. Worried, but, but the race Line of the day will be the silent. So can we say the word? I would hope so, yeah. Which, we, so, Tom said it's okay? He just said it shouldn't be. He said I talked to him. I'm like, Tom, the guy wrecked the segment. I know him. he's trying to do his job, but he wrecked his segment. Yeah. yeah. Jim, I mean, it happened. Jim Jeffries, I, don't overdo it, but uh, maybe you could, I, I know, you could go Nick, back there. Nick still a bad word. Is that one going <laughs> Well, be that's what uh, uh, English people call black people. Nick Nog, it's not even an American <laughs> word. <laughs> no. I'm not saying I agree with Those it. awful racist people. Yes. I really but, wish they see, wouldn't well, use well, this my, word. Point, no. my point is, they used Never. to in the 70s, they yeah. used to have a problem with black people. And then in the 80s, it, it yeah. became they had problems with the Indians and the Pakistanis mm -hmm. was the big problem that they had, and they united about that. And then it was like uh, after September the 11th, they had problems with Arab people. And now, it's since the EU has opened up, they hate the Polish people because the Polish people will do a kitchen for you for half the price. And oh, the British really? are the laziest workers in the world, and everything's <laughs> overcharged. I had some renovations done in my house. Of course I got Polish people in. I wouldn't make an English person make me anything. They couldn't build anything. They're drinking like 10 cups of tea a day, the lazy freak. <laughs> <laughs> really like the average English person, they work out drinks four cups of tea a day. Right now I live there. I'm part of their population. I don't drink any. So that means some bastard's having eight. Right? <laughs> a day. Every day. Yeah. I, it stopped us in our in our tracks here, though. So the sitcom. Let's get back to that because that's interesting. All the right. sitcom was called Lo what? Love thy neighbor. Love thy neighbor. And it still it was... airs on Australian TV because don't even get me started on Australian racism. That's, so they're, that's another... <laughs> they're in seventies racism. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Yeah. But it's yeah. funny to hear racism from other countries. Like yeah, that's why this is interesting. Yeah. They're like uh, we call them kangaroo lovers. It's like why there's nothing <laughs> yeah. here. Yeah. Somebody's yeah. being bothered by it. But so yeah. here. and and this uh, sitcom is a black family uh, next door to, to a white, white family, family and how they're going to get along. Well, called Love the, they had another one called Mind Your English, which was like a guy who was an English teacher who taught English to foreigners, and there was every different type of nationality, and there was some great stereotypes in that sitcom. Oh, that <laughs> must be it right there. If, if you're an Indian bloke, your head had to wobble in that sitcom. <clears throat> there was no other option. You know, right. I mean, that was, it was that type of thing. Yeah. Hey, See, there's uh, that is that Love Thy Neighbor, probably. There's right? Love Thy Neighbor there.
and the Jeffersons yeah. living next door to each other because uh, I think was, Wheezy yeah. always got along with Edith. Yeah. Two shows you really can't make nowadays. No, you, well, some no. of the greatest sitcoms no, ever. No. So what about Charles in Charge? Good luck getting that one through. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. I know. We're Whoa. going to the subject that matter that they girl, touched on. The Eggert or whatever. What's her no, name? Nicole, Nicole Eggert. Nicole Eggert. She was a good thing, wasn't she? What's happened yeah. to her? She still can't. Kicking about? Nah, she kind of uh, got old. Yeah, she screwed herself <laughs> up. She tried. She got like implants, and I don't remember who she. Was. Got those, like, soft she was like a sixteen-year-old on Charles in yeah. Charge, and then oh. she became a Baywatch babe. But I liked oh. her more when she was on Charles. Charles in sure. Charge. Yeah, because yeah. I was the same ages or something, <laughs> and I thought yeah. she, was, she was a bit special. See, you understand where I come from because uh, I we always talk about who was hot when you were growing up watching television, and these guys are like. They're, they're picking like women, like Wonder Woman and this. And right. I was like, no, I was always into chicks that were my age on right. television. I had a thing for Punky Brewster when I was eight as well. Right. Yeah. We were, I'm serious. I used to think, that yeah, age, yeah, she's a good thing. You're like, Punky. I was eight and she was eight. You, see, you said, I'd like to go and hold hands with her. I, no, I, I was, I <laughs> you know, was the well little innocent that, thing. You know. mm -hmm. I want to hold hands with Punky Brewster. Yeah. But Shalom Moon was 20 tried. at the time. She grew up to be a good sort as well. Oh, yeah. Now you want to hold her globes. I, I, I picked her right. I picked her at eight that she was going to be a hottie at 20 in Shalom Moon. Yeah. Moon yeah, there you go. Yeah, good sort. Paid off. Big, big titties. <laughs> oh, well, oops, that one. Oh. Well, we, well, we got to dump the word. Can you believe they word? don't even yeah, like yeah, that yeah. word? That one, that even one. that sweet little word. That yeah, one. look, we're all in agreement that that one's going to be dumped. When you, go back to, <laughs> that one is, uh, when you go back to some civilized nation, uh, uh, tell them the story of, of how we are just... Uh, how afraid of words we yeah, are. Yeah, how afraid of words Americans are. Yeah, words I was, hurt. I wasn't being hateful. No, no. But even if you were, it should be allowed. It should be. It's not illegal to be hateful, even though you aren't being hateful. Yeah. We're the only country to drop a bomb. Can we lighten up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on. We dropped two atom bombs. Yeah. That was a lot of guilt. What's wrong yeah. with the, a lot of guilt there, Jim. A funny yeah. word for boobies. I know. And they were wonderful bombs. So and, you, but so also, you can say uh, boobies. The whole thing with the... Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You with, can say boobies. Yeah, because it's uh, funny. It's silly sounding. Well, the, to okay. me, the okay. thing you know, also that's so fake about <laughs> stuff like N-word yeah. is because nobody has a problem saying that. No, like, no. They use it all the time now. But it's exactly like saying the word. It's just white people getting away with saying that word. Because if you say N-word, you're putting that other word that I can't say on the radio in people's heads. You know it and you say it in your head. So the person yeah. says, so you, somebody on CNN says N word and then I go, oh, she means, mm. yeah, yeah. yeah. So she's making me say it. But you yeah, want, they yeah. don't want you to say it. Watch where this is going to go, though. That word will be banned from radio After shows. After a while, you're not going to be able and to then, say N word. And then, and then TV shows are not going to say that either. Yep. They're going to have to come up with something else and then mm -hmm. that will be banned. And yeah. Exactly. So on and is, so on is, is and so word on. not banned? I thought it was banned. It shouldn't be. No, that people want it to it be is, banned. It is, but, but the, I, the, the, after a while, you're not going to be able to say, Literally, well, it, but it is funny. Like when you watch, when you watch, when you watch N word. Well, like what's yeah. his name? Mark Mark Cohen. Remember him, comedian. He yeah, yeah, told yeah. me he was watching um, uh, Blazing Saddles on TV, and they cut out the fart scene. Oh yeah, yeah. And they cut out every bad word. That, yep. Uh, down, like, even ass. It's the whole movie. And then, but the N word flying out of people's <laughs> mouths. Oh, really? Other. Yeah. The, I mean, it's all over yeah, Blazing yeah. Saddles. But it's, so it's like if the idea is not to offend people, you know, you took out the farts and you left in the N-word. <laughs> yeah. You know. Doesn't make too much sense. No. Hey, uh, getting back to the Brits, uh, we got a great story about a British guy. Listen to this. 38-year-old David Russell. The court heard he almost killed himself because he needed the money. <laughs> he used a gun like this to shoot seven nails into his chest and forearm. Mm. Then he told police he was a victim of street crime and tried to claim thousands of pounds in compensation. Mm. They just swung me around, pushed this thing into my chest. In hospital at the time, he told the BBC hospital. he'd been assaulted near his home in Gloucester by three young black men. <laughs> Oops. Mm. No, but he didn't mm. call them that. No, I'm sure. They were very young black men. They were young nignogs and they had carpentry tools. <laughs> <laughs> Rudimentary carpentry I don't know why. <laughs> At hospital. At hospital, <laughs> while on holiday. Having a cup of tea and driving <laughs> nails into my chest. The thing is, do you have that over here? Like, I... I like, he's wanting compensation off the government, not off the people. Like if Why? You get, right. Do you have that over here where you can just get money off you the government if you get hurt? You if something bad happens to you, 
No, in England, if something bad happens to you, they give you a few bucks. Yeah. Well, I, had, no I got two yeah. grand because I got my head fractured in a comedy club. Walking out, a guy came up behind me and smashed my head into a table. Didn't like the set. I had a good show that day as well. <laughs> I mean, and he me, and, and I you got, got paid more than the gig. Yeah, I, got, I just rang up the government and said, I've got a fractured skull. And they go, what happened? I went, someone bashed your head into a table. <laughs> and they went, oh. They went, oh and yeah, they sent me two grand. <laughs> like, what, what is that, that about? How is the British system. pound worth anything? They're dopes. They're worth, it's that? worth twice the dollar. Yeah. I, also, yeah. I also had a house break in. This is a true story, right? I, me and another comic called Steve Hughes were sitting at home. And I kid you not, this is what happened. Uh, two guys came through the window, one with a hammer, one with a machete. If you look at the side of my head, i got like a scar there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They cut my head, right? They tied us up and all that type of stuff. Then they drove off wow. out of my house. And they got caught speeding in my car before we had ever made the the call or whatever, right? <laughs> They're now serving 12 years in prison for grievous bodily harm, aggravated burglary, um, attempted rape, and possession. <laughs> wait, of wait, 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 wait. You can't just gloss over that. You can't just I, have that as part of I your list. I forgot to mention my girlfriend was in the house. Oh, and they oh, right. thing, oh, right. oh, 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 If I can't say the N-word on radio, I thought I couldn't get away with getting into graphic detail. Wait, and then listen to us. It's like, oh, it's your girlfriend. All right. That's, uh, yeah, that's no, not oh, interesting. Geez, no, that's not interesting. interesting. Why, we uh, thought you got raped. His roommate or something. Yeah, right? yeah. Why, att why attempted? Was he nervous? or what? How, no, because they, they, they left before and they held the knife to her throat. and they, the, the cops just want to put it. They also got him for possession of drugs, right? Which was brilliant because they were my drugs. Right? Ah, <laughs> they, they stole ah, your drugs. They, they stole like a little bag of weed and a gram of coke that my flatmate had, right? Uh. And the, the cops are questioning us and they go, uh, Mr. Jeffries, one last thing. Do you know anything about those drugs? Oh, yeah, in you're going to admit to that. In a and second. I went, No, I don't know anything about them. And the cop goes, Funny, your fingerprints were all over them. And I went, They made me touch it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the attempted rape. <laughs> and he, and he, that's probably and he how they got caught. caught. They're like, What's that, he, he knew, but he just let it go. Because yeah, 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 the cops were yeah. laughing about it afterwards, right? And the, these two blokes got 12 years, man. That's a long sentence. And the, the thing <laughs> is, when they broke into our house, they thought we were drug dealers, me and me, me the other mate, the other car. They thought we were drug dealers because... Well, I have, the, I have the lifestyle of a drug dealer. I just, I never seem to go to work. I drive a yeah. nice car. If someone knocks on the door at three in the afternoon, I'll answer in my underwear eating a bowl of cereal. Yeah, that's drug you know dealer. what I mean? That's, that's drug dealer yeah. behavior, right? Yeah. Or so comedian. They, one of the yeah, other, the comedian. Yeah. And they, yeah. they just assume and they came in. And when they were tying me up, I thought they were going to tie everyone else up in the house, right? So I, I acted like they were doing it a bit tight on my wrist so that when everyone else was tied up, I could break free and do some of my ah, ninja moves. Right. right. Yeah. But that uh, turned out they only tied me up and kept me <laughs> hostage. <laughs> you know, the, when they got pulled over, that's probably how they got caught was the drugs, because they got pulled over, and it's just speeding. It's just, okay, and then we're going to search the car. Oh, there's drugs here. Ah. Those aren't mine. No, Whose no, are no, they? No, no. They belong to the guy who I just tied up and tried to rape his girl for. Oh. Yeah, they, they, they went for a big high speed chase. There's at one stage during the break. I don't. I, don't, I, don't, I can speak about this now. The court case over, right? One one stage during the case, right? I'm on the ground tied up, and my head's been cut, and my other flatmates laying on the ground. My me, me girlfriend's laying under the duvet in the bed. The the nicest one out of the two blokes, right? Good guy, right? He he walks over <laughs> to like the chest of drawers, and I've got like pictures of my nephews and nieces, and he picks up one of the pictures. He goes, "Either you guys got kids, right?" And my best mate, he doesn't have a kid, goes, five year old boy." And I thought, I'm laying on the ground bleeding. They're going to kill me now. I'm the one yeah. they're going to kill. Yeah, because right? yeah. he's right? got kids. No, no, it's yeah. my kid. My kid it's lying. Yeah, yeah, so I went. Four-year-old girl, and then it, we try to tr uh, trump each other, right? <laughs> and I swear to God, I'm man, pregnant. Yeah, my, my mate goes, my one's retarded. <laughs> no way! I kid Come you on. not. I kid you not. <laughs> and the guys with the machete going, hmm. <laughs> Why did he cut your head? How did yeah. that happen? He, he uh, what happened was, I've also got a scar on top of my finger. No, the, 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 there was one guy who was really sadistic with a machete. It was like a, like a sugar cane cutting one, like a big curved, sort of two foot, two inch thing. And they tied me up head to feet. And then my mate sort of made a bit of a, a sort of a lunge at him, trying to fucking. Sorry. Oh, whoa, whoa, try, try, whoa. Try, 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 trying to fix. My mate made a bit of a lunge at him, trying to fix all the problem and all that type of stuff. So the guy said, don't do that again, and sliced the side of my head. Oof. Right? And then, and then blood was pumping out of my head just into like a puddle in front of me, and I'm tied up. And you think you'd be really nervous, but under that much pressure, the human brain just leaves. Like literally, my head was just going. Da, 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 da. Right? I was like, nothing had happened at all. My girlfriend's crying under the thing, and then he tied me up with 
the power cord from my girlfriend's hair straighteners. <laughs> and then when they cut me free, she didn't cry when they said they were going to rape her, right? When she saw that power cord was cut, she was upset. She was like, you can only get this brand in America. <laughs> I had to order away for this. <laughs> <laughs> I, s- I swear to God, this story is true. I'm not making this up. So how they said they were, they were going to rape her and they just left? They were doing it more to taunt us why, why they were in the house. I don't think they, really? they ever really were, but the cops just want to slap as much on them. Wow. They should. Good. They Good. Good. So Good. You need guns in... Uh... You need guns in your house. Yeah. Dan's a big fan of yeah, the guns. Oh, yeah. The thing is, the first thing I knew, I'm sitting in my living room chair, and then the guy comes through the window on the t- second story. and No uh, alarm? No. Well, the second story was open. We were in the house. No alarm? Yeah, but you don't have an alarm on while you're walking through your house. Of course you, you do. Oh, well, I didn't. No guns? Right. No guns. Everywhere? No, no. So the guy puts the machine. I was just sitting around in my underwear. He's there with the, he's there with the knife to me throat going, get me your car keys, get me your car keys. And I'm like... Look, man, every morning it takes me a little while to find him. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> when there's a machete to my throat. This is, it's let, really not let, let me rummage for a moment. Yeah, my grand, my, when my, uh, my grandparents live in Mexico City, the, 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 the dirty country that I'm from, and uh, 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 my grandfather, when he was like 94, he was pretty deaf, pretty much totally deaf, and uh, he had this big backed chair that he sat in that had its back to the front door of their house. And one day, these guys, banditos, banditos. Broke, broke into the house with guns. And uh, my grandmother, who was just the toughest woman, she just screamed, Don't move! at the guys with guns. And, like, she said, my husband, she tried to look calm and said, My husband is deaf, and he's 95. If he sees you, he's going to have a heart attack and die. And it's gonna, this is going to be murder. Stay where you are. And I'll get you whatever you're asking for. Like, she made the guy stay Just behind make, him. Like, it's trick or treat. Yes, exactly. Wait here at the door. I'll go Wait get at the you. Door, I'll get whatever you need, but do not let him see you because he'll die. And then you're going to be murderers. And these guys were just confused. And they said, okay. Oh, <laughs> and so right. they're like, well, let's see some jewelry. So she went up and chose some crap and wow. brought it down to them and stuff. And my uncle was there, too. And so she, they said, uh, we need, we want his car. They had guns. They're like, we're going to kill you. Yeah, but stay behind him, please. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. we will. And, and they gave him, they, so they got him jewelry and my uncle, they wanted a car. So my uncle gave him the keys to his car and they went outside and couldn't start it. So they, he had to come out and help them. He had to jump, <laughs> jump, jump start their oh, car. Oh, God, what Mexicans. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. We, we really have to take another break. Yeah. We're real late. Jim Jeffries, uh, the English, uh, bloke. Uh, yes. Caroline, Australian, Caroline Australian expat. Oh, Australian. Yeah, 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 we don't know here in America. I'm, I'm, I'm not a nice Sounds kind of. Let's call me He's a Caroline I'm tonight not. and Sunday. <laughs> yes. 212 757 4100. And of course, the great Louis C.K. Mm. Saturday night at the old uh, Westbury Music Fair, which is now called the North Fork something. I think Ticketmaster.com. <laughs> yes, uh, Westbury. And how about we give away Island. some tickets to your show right yeah, now? Yeah, let's give them away. Uh, we'll give uh, some tickets away to three random callers right now. 877 212 ONA. Oh, sorry. Louis was asking before where I'm going to be January 18th. And That's 19th. right. You, Look, I was on. Just wondering about those uh, dates. Borgata tickets are on sale now. It'll probably be sold out by the middle of next week. So www.theborgata.com. All right. Opie and Anthony. TK in studio, playing Long Island somewhere in the round. Westbury, That's all we got Birmingham. out of them today. The Westbury Music Fair. Westbury, Westbury. North Fork West. something Saturday Theater. the 17th. I think it's just the North Fork yeah. Theater. My tour continues. I was only going to go until November, but uh, there's a writer's strike. I got no job. Yeah. No, I'm going to be on tour all the uh, uh, myspace.com. Hey, hey what do you think of that writer strike, by the way? Uh, it's great. No, it's, it's not. <laughs> hey, I mean, fantastic. Yeah, no, the I'm thing, loving it. I mean, it's it's uh, it's we should be on strike, but people that are into it are get, losing the point. Like oh, really, when the president of this guild announced we're striking, a bunch of people cheered. Well, a strike is never that. a good thing. It's no. always bad. But people that are unemployed love strikes because then they get to do something instead of staying home. Oh, so there's some writers that weren't writing anyway. Yeah, they're like, yeah, something to do. Hey. And I can also schmooze with actually working writers on the picket They're line. networking. But here's the thing. Uh, to me, well, you don't want to hear about the strike, do you? It's so boring. Well, t- but, well, you're, you're I'm just trying to make it interesting for like the uh, yeah, here, here's what I would say. For the masses out there. People that's all that are telling you like these writers need something and it's not fair. That's not the point. It's just economics. We, we, no corporation is going to give you something because they should. Right. They're going to give you something because you make them. So we're m- m- trying to make them give us what we think we can get because most people can't write. I mean, even when you watch a bad TV show, 
the writer had to be really good just to accomplish that awful TV show. <laughs> so it's something that not everybody can do. So we're using that leverage to try to get more money, which because we haven't had a raise in a while in certain areas. So, but people that get too into it when you when you break up with your girlfriend and start calling her a c word all over town. It's hard to get back together with her. So, yeah, I think yeah. have to be kind of cool. You got to be a little careful, right? There yeah. could be some uh, leftover animosity. Yeah. This is hitting the wire today. Family feud afoot for Fox Cartoon. Listen to this Fox is producing fresh episodes of the animated comedy Family Guy mm. without the participation of its striking creator, Seth MacFarlane. Yeah. What? Who does, How? Who does pretty much all of the voices on the show. The voices, Not all, but... It. Oh, and, and he yeah. also... And he, he writes he, If there's anybody who's like the single power behind the show, because he kept it going when it was oh dead. God. Like, that's a show that got killed, and he crusaded and made it happen. Yeah, that's crazy. How are they going to so, do that? So, what are they just fired him, or is this because of the writers' strike that he's not going to be? This is there? yeah, I guess until the they're strike's making, over. Yeah, this, the, most shows when the writer because of the strike they can't make shows, but they're going to continue making. He, wouldn't family he guy. own the rights to it in some way? I don't understand. Well, no, they can. He, mm. they uh, own it. Fox and yeah, here's the, the explanation. Sudden, Fox yeah. and uh, sibling studio 20th Century Fox TV had the choice of going into reruns or continuing the show without McFarlane whose outspoken defiance of his employers have made him a cause uh, celebre for striking writers. After a large writers' rally outside the Fox uh, lot on Friday, where he was one of the speakers, Mac Farland said the studio could proceed without him, though he hoped it would not. And they have decided to do Family Guy without Seth. Yeah, they're doing that it is... because there, there's no way they're doing this for any reason other than that he spoke at the rally and that he was uh, considered a great speaker. And he's a really active guild member, well, so they're just targeting him because they're they're just well, well, these they're episodes, just showing off. They're scumbags. They of course can do they episodes are, but, well, they that don't do involve that. his voices, so it would just be like the daughter, the son, and the mum. Yeah, and the greasy deaf guy. Well, they'll just all... get uh, what's his name that did uh, Daffy Duck's voice. I hate. <laughs> yeah. I'll be fine. Mel Brooks. No, no yeah. blank. No Mel blank. Mel Blanc's do, do all son. The voice. Go get fake Fred or something. Yeah, I always hated that. Yeah, the fake Fred when it was like. Uh, Hey, Barney, yeah. what do you say we go to work, Bon? Yeah. It's like, wait, wait, that's not what Fred. Real no. Fred. As a kid, it, it was horrified yes, me. Yes, me too. When, they get rid when of he Fred died. Get oh, he died. He died, Fred. So, you know, that oh. didn't stop them. He was, he was, as, Fred he was as fat as his car. Oh, yeah, character. drinking uh, yeah. and uh, smoking the Winston cigarettes that Fred and Barney used <laughs> <Yes>. to shill <laughs> yes. as cartoon characters. Yes, I remember. Hey, Winston cigarettes, <laughs> Fred. Pretty good. Yeah, it's sitting back behind there. Sure is, Bond. And the cigarettes are always ha the size of their uh, their whole bodies for some reason. <laughs> yeah. So cigarettes for giant cartoon pack. are so tiny that it looks weird, so they had giant cigarettes. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, that's a good idea. So that's probably why. That's a good point. I was wondering. Yeah. Louis is great at explaining things. Yeah. He really is. Like, I would wonder why would they be small. And well, if you drew point. Fred Flintstone and put a cigarette in his hand, it's like a tiny little line. Like a yeah, you'll never even line. see it. So they just, somebody just said, make those bigger. Depends How big? How big? You remember that, by but, the way. But sir, that's the size of his whole uh, whole body. But how do you yeah, remember that? Make now we're, cigarettes bigger, idiot. Now we're looking at, at it on YouTube, and you're absolutely right. Yeah, the cigarettes are it's insanely a, long. They almost like look like cigars. Yeah, like they're villains. With yeah, long yeah. cigarettes. <laughs> 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 yeah, like the penguin. Hey, and other. Uh, we don't know how small. Look at that thing. It's, we don't it's know how giant. small they were. They were cavemen. Cavemen the cavemen weren't were as tiny. big as people are now. Through evolution, we've That's grown right. taller. <laughs> Maybe right. in proportion, they are normal sized cigarettes. That's true. And, and Barney was like three foot two. That's yeah, right. yeah, but that's true. But the Winston was Company doing the packaging. That's right. <laughs> and R.J. Reynolds has been a long run on that long, and they remember. Yeah, the caveman days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm glad we sorted that out. Yeah. The other thing about the writer strike, really fast. Ellen was supposed to do shows in New York. Yeah, because she, you know, she crossed the yeah, line. And she's there. not doing it now. And now she's not. She's staying in L.A. Oh, Why really? Why do you think that is? Because she knows the reception. She gets oh, they already said they're going to protest so the outside uh, where she's doing yeah, it. And I don't know. I have mixed feelings about it because uh, I think part of it is, again, they can't. you can't really say F the companies because yeah. you're going to need to work with them again. So they just found somebody that says, it's her. <laughs> Because she's, she's not, yeah. she has nothing to, she's not, uh, uh, we're not negotiating with her. She's not keeping our residuals back. Is she wrong, She just though? reported to work. Or That's all she, she did, reported <laughs> to a job that she wasn't on strike for. Is she wrong to do it, or is she as a producer? It's complicated, because uh, Jay Leno is being a hero, uh, because his show is run by writers. Her, her show is up against shows that don't have writers. So, like, Jay goes off the air, so does Dave, everybody's happy, and same with Jimmy Kimmel. But the shows that she's up against, Oprah, all those other shows, they don't have writers, so they can stay on the air. And her show is writer-driven. 
Um, and also because it's syndicated. But, you know, she kind of should not be working. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. You know, because when she complains about this is what would happen to my show, yeah, well, that's what everybody's risk is. Jay Leno's whole staff is getting fired. Yeah. Everybody's losing their jobs because of this. It's it's sacrifice. Wait, but, they're getting fired? Like but I don't think it's as simple as that. The thing is that Ellen is uh, not a popular person. She's kind of a rotten, uh, <laughs> smelly, awful, <laughs> She sucks stinky, when I met her. Uh, is she uh, not a nice lady? Idiot. She's no. she's. I wish we were on XM so I could describe her completely. Of course, <laughs> but I can't. Wait, what have you heard? The FCC cannot uh, would not let her be um, described. accurately described. This is interesting. <laughs> no. It would be like if a cop said who shot you and it was hard. to be like, you got to take me off the air because I, yeah. I can't. tell you. <laughs> Jimmy met her in Vegas, so this is really interesting because he got the big blow off. She was doing something for XM and we were out there for XM. So I was like, I was like, ah, I walk up and she's being filmed. I'm like, hey, uh, I was, you know, I get my pictures. With everybody, it's just what I do. It's you didn't get a picture with me. I've met you twice now. Yeah, but I, I, you, I'm too nervous to ask. Okay. So I walked up to uh, <laughs> I walked up to Ellen, and I'm like, "Hey, you know, I'm a comic. I'm also doing something with XM. I just wanted to get a quick picture." She's like, "Oh no, I can't. I'm in the middle of shooting." And she, but she wasn't, and I wanted to spit in her face. Yeah, she's really I gave her um, good trashing. If that's any consolation. Good for she's, you. I know people that work for her as writers, and she's yeah, she's uh, she's a uh, uh, dope. And uh, mean to people. Oh, easy, Lou, like on the language. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, she's, she's a spoil sport. She's yeah. a real ninny. <laughs> she's a right rotter, isn't she? Yeah, yeah she's a right rotter. Yeah, 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 yeah she's yeah. a... Yes, most definitely. They went to That's commercial right. I was reading recently, and she yelled at her writers, why did you write that for me? Yeah, she's uh, really got pounds wow. of... Yeah, that had made the press last week, her, I believe. Was she no. a good stand-up in a day? Yes, I think she was <laughs> a good stand-up. Yeah. She was a good yes. stand-up. Okay. She was fine. She was all right. I know she never made me laugh, really, but but... Uh, because she's got that way about her. Um, Being a leather. Well, no, not that one. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. Who cares about that? But the fact that she has this sort of MO uh, means that people pile it on. Yeah. So it's like, oh, look at her working. She shouldn't be working. And whatever, that story. You know what? I've had a show where I had writers, and I, often I'd look at them and say, you guys stink, and I hate you. <laughs> so I, the, the stories about how tough she is on the writers that I take with a grain of salt because well, I guess this was... there's, there's a natural, you know, you got to crack the whip and also this mm -hmm. there's a natural thing where the person who's on camera uh is taking the hits for bad jokes but would you do it in front so, of a live yeah. audience what's that would you do it in front of a live audience oh no i, never. I think that's what the story was oh, really? about yeah she did a joke and it sucked and she goes why would you write that for me and she was dead serious well, I don't know. While they're in break. Yeah. No, she sucks. You had good writers on Lucky Louie, man. Every one of them. They were funny, man. Yeah. Hey, what do you call uh, lesbians in Australia? Uh, stiff tongues. Stiff really? tongues. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Stiff <laughs> tongues. Stiff, stiff tongues. Interesting. Yeah. Do they always have, are their do tongues we, do always we get stiff? In there? Do we, yeah, yeah, don't don't say it 8,000 times until we see if it went through. <laughs> yeah. Why wouldn't yeah. it? What are you shaking your head? Oh, oh good. good. Yeah, you just can't describe, but just say yeah, stiff yeah. tongues. That's it's just a name. Yeah, not all That's Australians do. That just made me brother, really, but we're both Australians. <laughs> <laughs> it's plural. It makes it plural. Two guys. <laughs> all right, we're just about wrapping up here. Uh, uh, once again, here's the sound you're listening for tomorrow if you want to win $1,000, courtesy of the Opie and Anthony Show. Between 7 and 7.30, we'll play this. Hi, I'm Kenny, and I love the taffy. There you go. That'll be your Oof. cue to call to win the $1,000. And then what's, punch what's, what's him. The yeah, it's it? just a dumb thing that There's happened. some guy that called up, and he stunk. His phone call stunk. He lost his, I, no, he lost a couple teeth because he was uh, chewing on the taffy. And we're like, oh, why would you do like that if you knew your him. teeth were a little loose? I, so he needs the money to get uh, his teeth fixed. I had one of those great lame moments yesterday where I tried to explain someone the sausage phone call oh yeah i just couldn't really tell it right i was just an idiot i was just going well <laughs> he had a 16 ounce sausage and now he's only got a 12 ounce sausage <laughs> and he can't feed his family and people are like that's not funny and i'm going was, <laughs> was. <laughs> we, we were laughing about it i don't know his voice bothers me this guy's there's something by the way he goes the sausage the pack yeah his voice goes yeah. like a knife Pakey. just this is what jim jeffries is talking about let's try to squeeze it in from yesterday oh. Hello, 12 ounce guy. oh this is the guy calling jimmy dean because he's really pissed off about the 16 ounce so sausage going down to a 12 ounce sausage for the same price the same left. price and he's uh leaving this on hold Little well, at this point, sorry, it really needs a little more setup. Mm -hmm. He's waiting to leave his message, and he's talking to his family. Little old twelve ounce goddamn roll of sausage supposed to feed your brother and me and you, six hundred pounds of men, at least. You get my point? Get and me. the two girls, and they put it in that <laughs> pussy roll of sausage. Son of a bitch! Somebody needs their ass kicked. Some little consumer geek, Roy. 
save money. Yeah, save money. Save money. I'm going to eat, God damn it. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> and meanwhile, no, the next better. no, it gets better because it's amazing. Meanwhile, that's what he wants to do. He said, "Save money, save money." He doesn't want to buy two twelve ounces. He really he so he so money. there's yeah. some advertising that says this will feed a whole family, and he says yeah. he, him and his fat family, his whole fat he, family, feel taken. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, taken. They used to buy sixteen ounce, and now the company have dropped it back to twelve yeah. ounce. And yeah. he's outraged. He's just outraged. We got to speed along because they're going to uh, yeah. knock us off the air. So now it's time to leave the message. Yeah, Randy Taylor. I don't know where you people come from. I don't know if you test your products, your quantity of your products. Your products are very delicious. <laughs> Love your sausage for 30-something years, but I can't take and feed a family of five on a little 12-ounce roll of sausage. I don't mind paying sausage. you more money for your 16-ounce roll of sausage, but you don't have it anymore. You've got a 12-ounce roll, and you've got three men that weigh over 200 you pounds got... apiece, a woman that's a little plump Scotch girl, and a daughter who's 13, and you're going to try to take a 12-ounce roll of sausage and a couple of dozen eggs and feed that, it ain't going to work. It does. And I'm not going to purchase your product anymore guy. or ever again. Ever again. I love this guy. Oh, my God. 12-ounce sausage. 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 It's, it's the way he says oh the G God. at the end. Sausage. 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 People who do that, that sound dry sausage. nuts. Yeah. Sausage. And, I love and, uh, that man. A well, couple of dozen eggs and a <laughs> side of beef <laughs> and, a, and an entire How am I pig. To feed the family. Oh, no. She's a little plump. <laughs> Just an open spigot of milkshake <laughs> <laughs> and that twelve ounce sausage. Here's here's part two of the message. It's angry. And as far as your sixteen ounce and maple and sage, mm. I don't eat that. I'm not from the north. I'm a Texas man. Jimmy Dean sausage is for southern people to eat with the breakfast. <laughs> with the fried eggs and the T-bone steak. <laughs> and I can't see going to a little 12-ounce package oh. to feed four, five, six people. And I'm not going to buy two of those 12-ounce packages just because you want to downsize and charge the same goddamn price. Oh. I'd sure like a reply, and I'd sure like you to go back to your 16-ounce package on your regular sausage because oh. I'm not going to buy it otherwise ever again. I'll just have my own damn sauce made like I used to 30-something years ago. It's not tasty as yours is, but it'll work. <laughs> Goodbye. It'll work. Goodbye. It'll work keeping How us fat. How am I supposed to feed my kids? <laughs> Maple sage. Slow-mouth sausage and the world of food. That gets better and better uh, the more you hear it. That guy rules. He does rule. Oh, God, I love it how it. he's angry, but he keeps complimenting. I <laughs> yeah. No, the no. You got your 16 ounce maple sage, but that's for the north. <laughs> for the north. That's I'm a for the north. Man. I'm Texas man. <laughs> that's for uh, men who uh, bed other men. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we lay down with a woman. We don't like maple. Uh, I, the thing I like picturing him with his reading glasses, reading the number off the package while he's dialing it. <laughs> yeah. Literally thick glasses. Let me see right here what that she number is. is. Yeah. Customer service for the Jimmy Dean Celsius. We're yeah. getting requests for that to be put up on ONA radio.com. Yeah, it's the greatest thing Can I've we ever do that? That's fantastic. All right, we'll put that up on ONA radio.com. Uh, it's going to be my phone ring. We're out of here. Yeah, Jim, Jim Jeffries. Jeffries tonight and Sunday. Caroline, 212 757 4100. Uh, Sweet Louis C.K. Saturday night, the North Fork, uh, for whatever it is. North it's the Fork. old Westbury Music Fair in Long Island. That's go right. to Ticketmaster. Or LouisCK.com for information. Yes, and for me, go to my MySpace for information on my Borgato show in January. Thanks, Sammy. Bye bye. And uh, by the way, no XM show today. Yes, and uh, the reason is there is a master computer that is uh, completely shut down. So, the uh, no live XM show today, but they'll play some fine older stuff, I guess. And then the chatter begins, but that is the God's honest truth. <laughs> They're having a major issue with equipment over there today. So uh, we'll see everybody tomorrow live uh, starting at 6 a.m. on the East Coast. Thanks, guys.